Hey everyone, Ellie here and Josiah. We are going to take you guys through a 30 minute full body workout. We're gonna stay on the front of the machine today. So base model of the machine is definitely what you need and we'd recommend front handlebars, bungee, and hand weights if you have them. Let's get started on one black spring and we're gonna meet in a kneeling plank. So knees are on the carriage, hands on the front platform. And once you find your shoulders, hips, and knees in one long line in that kneeling plank position, let's bring our hands either on to the front platform or over the rails. And we're gonna start off in a cobra. So for cobra, you're bending through the elbows, slowly lowering them towards the platform, and then pushing through the heels of the hands, rising back up. So our goal here is to light up our triceps as well as your core. Check in with your traps, neck, shoulder area, okay? Slide your shoulders down into their sockets. Maybe turn your head side to side just a little bit. Make sure your neck is nice and loose here. And focus on keeping the tension right up and down the six pack and into the backs of the arms. We're building some heat. Now, a common misconception in Cobra is that you've got to lower your elbows all the way down to the platform. That's not necessary. In fact, our platform's so small, you don't really have much space to lower all the way down anyway. So you're just bending through the elbows as far as you can, keeping your core engaged, your low back neutral, and then rising back up. We're here for 10. Nine, we're gonna hit some tricep push-ups next. In five, in four, hold that kneeling plank in three, two, and one. So we're gonna hold the kneeling plank. I like to wrap my hands around the side of the front platform or those rails. And from here, we're gonna bend through the elbows, keeping the elbows really close to the rib cage, and then drive back up. So you can do this in a kneeling plank position. Another really effective place to be in this one is more of a tabletop position. Shoulders away from the ears. You're bending through the elbows, lowering your chest towards your front platform, and then pushing back up. Now, if you want even more intensity than what I've just offered you, you can also do these push-ups on your toes. We're gonna go 15 seconds here. Oh, nice, Josiah's gonna show you the toe option. Perfect. In five, forearms down, knees down, let's meet and saw. In three, two, one. Back to the knees, forearms lowered across the front platform. And for saw, we're just gonna slide out away from our front platform. Use your core, use your lats, pull the shoulders over the elbows. So from there, we're sliding out and back. And you wanna stop once your shoulders are over the elbows, or if you want an extra challenge, you're gonna stop before the shoulders are over your elbows. Okay, so if you keep the shoulders behind the elbows the whole time, you're gonna feel a lot more tension in your core. So just know that's an option if you wanna pick up the intensity here. Check in with your breathing. Nice big inhales, nice full, strong exhales. Think about those exhales wrapping in around the waistline. Let's go 15 seconds. Stay with me, you're doing good. We're gonna stay in this position for our next move. We're just gonna add on a little bit. In five, we're gonna turn this into an inchworm. Listen to me, I'll talk you through it. In three, in two, stay on the forearms and the knees, and one. So for inchworm, we're gonna do one saw back. So slide out away from the platform, just like we've been doing. And then as you pull forward, pause with the shoulders over the elbows. You're gonna scoop through the belly, round through the spine, chin towards the chest, hollow through the belly. Perfect. And then slowly extend back out, finding your kneeling forearm plank. Right, we'll slide back out, just like we were for saw. And then as we pull forward, we're focusing on a kneeling crunch, right? So we're scooping through the abs. And the more you can keep your hips in front of your knees, the more challenging this will be. So keep alternating between those two ranges of motion. Mm -hmm. Exhale, lift navel up towards spine, chin to chest. Perfect. Let's go 10 seconds here. We're ready to pick up the intensity just a little bit. We're gonna meet in plank. Hands on the platform, toes on the carriage. In four, in three, two, one. Let's go, plank. Find a really strong plank here. Push down into your hands, slightly dome your upper back. Abs are in tight here. Turn on your legs as well. Let's go bare. Bend through the knees, drag the carriage in underneath 
knees under hips, and then send it back out slow and with control. Big exhale, you're scooping through the low abs to drag the carriage in, slowly back out. So listen up. Next exercise, we're gonna be coming up to those tall handlebars. So if you don't have the handlebars, you're gonna keep your hands on the rail. And you can do any of the moves we've just done. Repetition is gonna make this more effective. Let's go 15 seconds in your bear. Hang with me, you got this. Stay in it, do not drop, you got this. Let's go 10, nine, in eight, toe stay. In seven, hands to your handlebars, it's catfish. In three, two, and one, let's go catfish. Hands up to the high handlebars. Your toes are tucked on the carriage here. And you're gonna zip your inner thighs together and lift your heels up pretty high. Good, so what Josiah is showing you is he's got his shoulders slightly behind his wrists. That's gonna help you feel it a little bit more. I want you to think about catfish like a tall version of bear. So think about still scooping through the low belly to pull the knees in towards the chest and then sending it back out. You do wanna keep some weight in your upper body so that it's not all dumping into the legs. Think about being kind of balanced with your body weight here. Awesome work, everybody. Let's go 20 more seconds. We're gonna hit our first leg exercise. So one heavy dumbbell, if you have it. We're gonna start in elevator lunge with your left foot forward. Let's go five. In four, step the left foot forward in three, two and one so left foot steps forward one heavy dumbbell you're going to place that weight in between both your palms we'll lower down into elevator lunge pause at the bottom you're going to twist to your left bring that weight back to heart center drive down to your left heel slowly lift up good so every time you lower down into elevator lunge we're going to add that twist beautiful so we're getting just a little more activation here through our waistline because we're not really gonna do any direct oblique work today. Good, we just have 30 minutes. So we wanna add in as much as we can to make it super effective. And you're definitely gonna wanna slow it down. Okay, so however slow you're already going, go a little slower. Good. 10 seconds, we're gonna step the left foot forward to the floor, we're going front lunge. In four, in three, two, keep your weight, one. Step your left foot forward to the floor, right toes are gonna to stay tucked on the carriage. We'll keep that dumbbell between our palms. As you lower into front lunge, go ahead and send the weight forward out from your heart, straight out in front of you, there you go. Dig down through the left heel, you'll pull the weight in towards your chest as you slowly rise up. Slow and controlled, we've got just 60 seconds in this variation. Good, check in with your shoulders, make sure they're staying out of the ears, nice and relaxed. Getting a little bit of activation here in the chest, especially if you press into the weight between your palms, right? So really squeeze on that weight, get a little more activation across the front line of your body. Let's go eight, seven, six, five, in four, we're gonna bring it down and hold in three, two, one. Bring it down and hold. Stay where you are with the legs. Just draw the weight in towards the chest, press it back out. Bring it in towards the chest, press it back out. Three more times, in towards the chest, press it back out. You're doing good. Two more. One more. Slowly rise to the top. Let's go back to elevator lunge. Bring the left foot back onto the platform. Meet me at the bottom of your elevator lunge and hold. Weight stays at heart center. Perfect. From here, let's go carriage kicks. Back knee is coming in underneath your hip and then kicking the carriage back out. So anytime we do a carriage kick, it means we're moving the carriage with our back leg. Keep kicking. Let's go 10, nine, eight, seven, in six, back to your lunge in four, three, two, one. Back to your lunge, just 15 seconds. On deck, we are going floor lunge, okay? So feel free to ditch the weight. It's gonna be your left foot that steps off to the left side of your machine. In three, two, one. Ditch your weight, step your left foot off to the left side of the machine. Right toes stay tucked on the carriage and floor lunge. So remember, anytime we're doing a lunge with a foot on the floor, 
When we lower down, we're going to hinge forward at our hips so that you're keeping length in your low back. Drive down through your left heel, slowly lift up, and actually look down at your left knee this entire lunge. So lower down, look at your left knee, make sure it's stacked over your ankle. Press down into your left heel, slowly lift up, make sure the knee stays over your ankle. Okay, I'm a real big stickler about this because it, when our knee pushes forward over our toes, we put extra pressure into our knee joint, right? It might not hurt you in this particular workout or 20 workouts from now, but one day all of that added pressure to your knee joint is gonna become really troublesome. So let's practice keeping the knee safe, which is also gonna force the backside of your left leg to do more work. So you should feel this in the left calf, the hamstring, the glute, and pause at the bottom, right? Every time you bring it down, little pause, perfect. In four, we're gonna take it down and hold. In three, two, one, take it down and hold. From here, we're gonna move into a hamstring curl. So you're gonna go ahead and push into that foot on the floor. You're gonna bring the knee behind the ankle and then the knee over the ankle. If you've got a pole or a wall or something for balance, you might wanna grab onto it. You can always use that platform handlebar if that helps. Or you can use your lovely wife. Or Josiah says he can use his wife. I guess that's what I'm here for. <laughs> All right, in four, bottom of your lunge. Let's meet there in three, two, one. Bottom of the lunge, left knee over the ankle. Let's go carriage kicks. Back knee is coming in. We're kicking it right back out. We already know this one. We did it before. You've got 15 seconds, team. We're changing our springs. It is one black, one red. One black, one red, side kicks. Left foot on the floor, right foot on the carriage. In five, in four, three, two, and one. Let's go one red, one black. Left foot on the floor, you're gonna stay facing everybody. Left foot right here, right heel is coming to the edge of the carriage. Good, so it might be more comfortable to put your foot on that cushy part, yeah. So for side kicks, right, it looks like you're pretty much at the bottom of a squat. You want your left foot pretty close to that front platform so that you have enough resistance. And then your right foot has a lot of options. If you've got a strap, you can hook it in the strap. I kind of like to tuck it onto the front edge of the carriage. But listen up, if the tension feels way too heavy, two different ways you can adjust it, okay? You can inch your left foot a little further away from your front platform or you can place your right foot towards the back rail on your carriage. So play around with this. You want the movement to feel as challenging as possible, right, but manageable. We wanna be able to stay in the exercise. Weight should be pretty centered. Check in, weight is back in our heels, core is tight, chest is lifted, shoulders back. And then maybe just slightly flare your knees out just a tiny bit to really activate the sides of your glutes, right? We're working this lateral range of motion, which is really good for our bodies because a lot of times we're moving forward all day. In four, down, hold in three, two, we're just gonna hold a squat position. So let the right knee bend in. So bottom of the squat, see if you can sink down a little lower, keep the carriage steady, squeeze your glutes, lift almost all the way to the top, and then take it right back down. Nice control. Okay, so bungee is on deck. If you do not have a bungee, you could do runner's lunge. You could do these kicks without a bungee, right? Your call. You can do any other leg exercise you want. Just remember the left leg is still our focus. In four, down, hold. In three, two, one, down, hold. Little pulses, little pulses. Push the carriage out a little bit further. Here is 10. Bungee is going on your left foot. Give me a bungee kick in three, two, one. Bungee kick. So bungee is going onto the left foot for me here. And we're gonna bend our left knee so that our heel stacks over the knee and we're kicking our heel up towards the ceiling. So straight up towards the ceiling, just kick up. Mm -hmm. Good. So lots of different ways you can set yourself up in bungee, guys. You'll see Josiah's up on his hands here. He's got his hands on the carriage. You are also welcome to take your hands down to the floor and then check in with the amount of tension you have in your bungee. Okay, so if it's not enough, you're gonna scoot your body 
closer to the back end of the machine and that's gonna give you more resistance. And if it's too much, ditch the bungee and just keep the squeeze in your glute. Really active, mindful squeeze. In four, up, hold in three, two, one, up, hold. From here, no slack in your bungee. Let's go into a hamstring curl. Extend the leg out straight as you can and then squeeze your heel back into your glute. As best you can, left knee is gonna stay pretty much where it is the whole time. Check back in with your core, right? So we don't wanna feel any tension in our lower backs, any dipping down through the belly. And if at any point when we work bungee, you want more for your core, you have the option to lift the opposite arm. So that would be our left arm. That would actually be our right arm because we're working our left leg, Josiah. Give me this bungee. You're doing the wrong leg. Oh, dang it. Keep going. In four, left leg out and hold. Hopefully you guys are on the right leg. In three, two, and one, left leg out, hold. So that bungee's on your left foot? I hope so. Little pulse is up. Straight leg pulse, straight leg pulse. Okay, it's really common that we mix up our right and lefts during this workout because mentally we sort of end up somewhere totally different because this is so intense. In five, give me your bungee kick. Bend your knee, heel to the ceiling. In three, two, one, heel to the ceiling, pulse it up, pulse it up, pulse it up, pulse it up. Listen up. We are going back to one black spring. You're gonna give me a reverse cobra. Knees on the front platform, hands on the carriage. In five, four, three, two, one. Ditch your bungee, your perfect position, reverse cobra on one black. So we're gonna start up on the hands and we're gonna be lowering the elbows down towards the carriage, right? Maybe the elbows touch, maybe not, okay? We really wanna focus on lighting up the backs of the arms so the elbows are going straight back and keeping our core engaged so that the lower back isn't feeling any pressure. Okay, so good hack here. If this move's feeling way too intense, you could do wheelbarrow instead or saw, or you can do this on two black springs. Okay, I'm always gonna give you options so that you can make this machine customizable to your body, right? That's really important. Let's go just 10 seconds and we're gonna go back into our tricep push-ups. Let's try them this time from a tabletop position. I have a feeling it's a lot more challenging than you think it's gonna be. Okay, in four, in three, two, one. So hands are gonna come to the rails and from there, we're gonna find a tabletop position. From tabletop, you're gonna lower your chest down, keeping the elbows right beside the rib cage, and then push back up. Good. So Josiah's showing you modified planks. His shoulders, hips, and knees are more level, right? But let's do the other option. So from tabletop, same move. Bend through the elbows, lower down through the chest. Good, and bring some weight forward into the arms. Perfect. And you'll notice what happens is this puts us at more of an elevated angle as we lower into our push-ups, so it can make it a lot harder in the triceps, which is the whole point. Let's go 10, nine. You're doing great. We're gonna come up to the toes, stay on the hands in five. Reverse plank in four, three, two, one. Let's go reverse plank. Up on the toes, up on the palms. From here, push into the palms, dome your upper back, let's go reverse bear, bend through the knees. Okay, so we're repeating some of the moves that we did earlier. This is gonna make things really effective because your body already knows what to do. Okay, that is my only goal for you, is to make this workout super smart and effective. Breathe. Big scoop through the low belly. Every time you want to drop out of bear, I want you to remember you have less than 20 seconds here. We're going to turn around. It's going to be right foot forward. We're going elevator lunge. Grab your hand weight. Here's eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Elevator lunge with the right foot forward. So that's right foot on the front platform, left toes on the carriage, and you'll grab your weight between your palms. Okay, so push into that dumbbell. And for this one, we're gonna pause at the bottom, weight at heart center side, and we're gonna twist to the right. Okay, we bring it forward and then back up. 
So not only is this getting us to work through the waistline a little bit more, but it's also making us stay at the bottom of our lunge a little bit longer. Okay, slow yourself down as much as possible. When we do only 30 minutes for our class, we need to go really slow and we need to be mindful that we feel our muscles engaged the entire time we're doing it. So when you do this lunge, pause at the bottom, find that twist through your waistline, and as you lift up, you're keeping a micro bend in your right knee so that you're keeping that leg really engaged. If you start to shake, great. If you need to dish the weight at any point, no big deal. 10 seconds here. We're getting ready to hit front lunge. So that's gonna be right foot forward in front of our machine. Keep your dumbbell in three, two, and one. Let's go ahead and carefully hop the right foot forward to the floor. And as we lower down into this lunge, we're gonna send the weight forward. Dig down through your right heel, squeeze your right glute, bring it up. Okay, so as you lower, and we send the weight forward, you also do wanna hinge slightly forward from the hips so we're not straining our low back. Go ahead, drive down through your right heel, slowly lift up, micro bend in your knee at the top. There we go. Okay, now's a really good time as we're starting to get a little bit more fatigued to check back in that your right knee is staying stacked over your right ankle. Okay, the tendency on these light lunges is for the knee to push towards our toes. Right, even a little bit. Let's try to tighten up our form as best we can to make these moves as effective as possible. In three, bring it down and hold. In two, one, down, hold. We're gonna send the arms out, pull them in towards the chest. Send the arms out, pull them in. For three, for two, and one. Let's go elevator lunge. Hop your right foot back up to the platform. Bring it down to the bottom of your elevator lunge and hold. Good. Carriage kicks. Back knees coming in. Slowly back up. Now listen, you can see how low Josiah is in this lunge. That's great. If you cannot hold it this low, that doesn't really matter to me. What matters is you stay in the lunge just a little bit the whole time. So do not straighten your right leg and shake out all of the work and all of the tension you've worked so hard to build. When you stand up and shake it out, your muscles have to start over, okay? When we first start doing this workout, we might have to do that a lot and we just get back into it. But I know that you can stay in this lunge. We're going back to elevator, up and down, full range in three, two, one, slowly and with control, full range of motion. 15 seconds. We've got our floor lunge up next. So for floor lunge, your right foot is going to hop off to the right side of your machine next to your front platform. In five, in four, in three, two, one. Ditch your weight. Right foot steps to the floor beside your machine. And then we're slowly gonna lower it down into our lunge. And then drive down through your right heel lift up. You're working the back side of your right leg. Try to take your left leg out of the equation. Really nice form, Josiah. So notice as he lowers down, he starts to hinge forward from the hips, creating length. Oh, and he's gonna use me as a pole again. He's getting tired. I hope you guys are feeling it too. Breathe into the work and slow as you possibly can and mindful as much as possible. So squeeze the muscles that I tell you are working. Right glute, right hamstring, right calf. Drive through your right heel Feel that line of energy up the entire backside of your leg and turn it on. In four, down hold. In three, two, you're right there. Let's go carriage kicks. Back knees coming in, slowly back out. Yes, you can. Stay focused, stay in it. You have got this. If you need to yell, you need to let it out, who cares? Bug your neighbors, bug your kids. We're here for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, back to your lunge in four, three, two, one, back to your lunge, 15 seconds. We are going one red, one black. It is side kicks. That'll be right foot on the floor in front of your platform, left heel on your carriage in three, two, 
and one. One red, one black. Right foot is on the floor. Left heel is gonna find somewhere to tuck onto your carriage. Good. So, shift your weight back into your heels. And I personally don't like to hang on to the handlebars for this one because they're a little bit too low. And what tends to happen is we start to round through our spine. So think I'm sitting back into a chair, back into a squat. And from there, we're kicking out. Good. Just I bring that right foot forward a little further for me. Good. Now drop your hips back. So sometimes it helps if you inch your body forward as much as you can, still straddling your front platform. Gives you a little bit more room to shift your weight back. See if you can find that slight flare of your knees open so that you're really firing from the sides of the glutes. You're also gonna feel the quads a bit in this one is basically like you're holding a squat the entire time Listen up, you're more than halfway through this one here. So hang on, slide your shoulders back, lengthen out your spine. So if you start to round forward, I want you to get your chest lifted, find length from the crown of your head through your tailbone. In four, we're gonna hold a squat in three, two, one. So left knee is bent, we're at the bottom of the squat, drive through your heels, squeeze your glutes, lift up, keep the carriage right where it is. Take it down, nice and slow. Drive through both heels, lift up. Good, flare your knees out a little wider. See if you can push the carriage out half an inch further. Just give it a shot, try. You might surprise yourself. We're here for 10, nine. We're gonna go back to our side kick in four, three, down low, two, one, low, side kicks. All right, team, 15 seconds. Bungee's up next. Bungee is going onto our right foot. So you'll come down on all fours, facing the back of the machine, bungee on your right leg. Remember, if you don't have a bungee, any other right leg exercise in four, three, two, one. Grab your bungee, it's going on your right foot. I'll help you this time to size so you get it on the right foot. We're going bungee kicks, right heel to the ceiling, right heel to the ceiling, kick it up. So on all fours, right, you can be on the hands. Another really great option to get a little bit more support here, forearms. I personally like the forearms because they give you a little more support for your core and they take out any sort of irritation in your lower back. So, lots of options. You need more resistance. You're crawling towards the back end of the machine. A little less, you're scooting back a little bit, right? Or you ditch the bungee all together and you just kick it up. Perfect. Just I already did this leg part of the way last time, so he's gonna work without the bungee this time. We're thinking heel to the ceiling, heel to the ceiling. And your leg might be shaking, and hell yes, that's what you've been working towards this whole time is to get to that sense of fatigue and failure. In four, up, hold. In three, two, hold at the top. Hold on to that tension. You worked hard to get here. Hamstring curl. Send the leg out straight. Curl it back in. As you do this, try not to let any tension creep in, any slack creep into the bungee. We want tension on the bungee the whole time. Tension on the bungee the whole time. How is your breath? How is your core? Can you find a little bit more length in your neck? Can you soften the muscles in your face? Keep going with that hamstring curl. Try to bring that heel all the way in towards the glute. Nice control. Slowly back out. Listen, once we finish off our leg, you have just two exercises left in class. Just two, that is it. In four, straight leg. In three, two, one. Send the leg out straight as you can, little lift up. Squeeze from the base of your glute where your hamstring meets your glute. Little pulse, little pulse. Let's go 10, nine. Back to your bungee kick, final time. In four, three, two, one. Heel towards the glute, kick the heel up, kick it up, kick it up, kick it up. 15 seconds, give me one black spring. Give me a reverse saw to begin. In five, in four, three, two, and one. We're going one black spring. It is a reverse saw. Forearms on the carriage, knees on the platform. Now listen, get into that kneeling forearm plank for me and just hold. We're gonna do, it's a reverse saw floor pike combo, okay? So one reverse saw for me, so you're gonna slide the carriage out and then bring the elbows back beneath the shoulders, pause, tuck both toes onto the floor, straight legs, pike your hips up. 
Good. Come back down into that plank, knees carefully lower, one saw. Once the elbows are beneath the shoulders, tuck your toes on the floor, straight legs, pike your hips up. Come back to your plank first, then carefully lower the knees, do it again. So this is our reverse saw to floor pike combo. Right, and what I love so much about this is that you get a layer in one move from the knees with one move on the toes. So if you're still building strength on those planks, in those planks, on your toes, right, this is a really great way to do it because you get a layer it in. Let's go 15 seconds. We are gonna get into our finisher. You're gonna bring your toes onto your front platform that is behind you. Your forearms are gonna stay right where they are. You're gonna meet me in a reverse forearm plank in three, two, one. Toes up to that platform, let's go. Reverse forearm plank from here, let's go bear. You're doing bear on the forearms, it's harder than bear on the hands. This is our third set of bear today and this is where you finish your workout, right? You've put in all this time to get to this moment. You have less than 30 seconds left in class. How do you want to finish it out? Everything you can fight for it. Push into the forearms, dome your upper back, turn on your legs, let them help you work here. Less than 20. Stay strong, keep breathing. Yes, you can. I believe in you. Hold this forearm plank in three. Hold it. Two, one. Hold your forearm plank. Final 10, nine, eight, seven. Wait for that last count. Here's four, three, two, one, drop. Whew. Nice work, you guys. Child's pose is always a great place to finish. So you can walk your hands forward onto the floor like Josiah has. Hips to your heels, release your head, maybe roll your forehead side to side, massaging that third eye. Awesome, awesome job. Let's bring it together. So either seated or standing up. Okay, shoulders roll down and back, open up your chest. Two deep breaths, we always seal in our work. Inhale, arms up, reach up, look up. Exhale, hands to heart. One more time, deep breath in, reach up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Yeah. You're done, you did it. Come back and do this class as many times as you need. Every time you're gonna learn something new, you're gonna get a little better. Thank you guys for being here. Have a great rest of your week. I swear I know my right from my left. <laughs>